Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. A while back a viewer asked if I would make a Bible cover. I decided that this particular cover could also fit on just about any soft cover book that you have. So this is just a little notebook that I put in here. You can use them for day planners, address books, any type of soft cover book will do. Also, later on in this video, I have a little surprise, no sew project that I think you'll all like. So as they say in television, stay tuned. So let's get started. You can get any size notebook you want. This is a very small one. I purchased it at Walmart. It was somewhere between $2 and $2.50. And so there, it's just your standard rule line notebook. Very inexpensive. For this particular project, I'm using two fabrics. Now they can be the same fabric or different. A piece of interfacing, and I'm using heavy iron-on interfacing. Options are this decorative ribbon and then another option are little ribbons to tie the book closed. And then you're going to need a tape measure. Place your tape measure underneath your notebook and you're going to measure from the back side up around the side and across to the top. So I'm going to line the tape measure up near the edge over here. So that's where my zero is on my tape measure lift it up and go across to the other side and mine measures eight and three quarters then measure from one end of the notebook to the other and it's six inches here are my measurements six inches by eight and three quarter inches to the six inches, that's the one that's from the top to the bottom, add three quarters of an inch. And to this measurement, that's the measurement that wraps all the way around the book, add five inches. Now, what that extra amount is for is seam allowance, and there's going to be a little cover on the inside here. So if you're doing a larger book cover, this measurement in here might be a little more. So you, I, if you're using a really big book, I would make a little test piece, a little test book cover out of just some old scrappy fabric that you have just to make sure you have the right measurements. If you have decided you want to have the ribbon on the outside of the book cover, have your fabric for the outside facing up, lay your ribbon in the center or actually anywhere that you want it, and stitch on each side of the ribbon. Then you have an option of fusing your interfacing on in the beginning. It's going to really be up to you. The instructions for fusing are real easy to follow. They're on the outside of your package. But if you don't have a package with it, then you're placing a damp cloth over the top using a hot iron with steam, holding your iron in one spot for 12 to 15 seconds, lift and move it again until you've covered the entire piece. Now I like to do mine after my project is done. So now I've got my interfacing there on the back with glue side touching the back of this fabric. Here's my fabric for the inside of the book cover and I'm placing it here on top. So line up all of your edges. Then pin everything to hold together. This is real important because you don't want your fabrics to slip and they do when you are sewing. So place pins around all four edges. Then on one side, I prefer one of the longer sides, indicate an opening that you're not going to stitch over. So you're going to leave this open 
and stitch over all of the other areas. So after you've got everything pinned, start here, stitch back and forth, do a quarter inch seam. Go all the way down to this corner. When you get a quarter of, quarter of an inch away from this edge, leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot, turn your fabric, lower the presser foot, and continue stitching. And you would do that at every corner. And just stitch all the way back around here and back stitch a few times. Before you turn it front side out, trim some of the fabric off the corner. We like to trim it off because it helps uh, the corners lay flatter once it's turned front side out. So what I usually do, you can use scissors or a rotary cutter. If you're using the rotary cutter, make sure you don't get your fingers too close. So I'm just going to cut at an angle here and then I'm going to go off to the side a little bit and cut some off and then the other side. And do this at all four corners and then when you're done, reach inside this opening and turn it front side out. After you've turned it front side out, make sure you press your edges flat. Also, turn your opening edges in one quarter inch and pin it close. Now we're going to put on the little ribbon ties. Now remember this is an option, you don't have to do this part. My fold area that goes on the inside is about two and a quarter inches. Now remember yours could be a different, especially if you're using a different size book. So I'm going to fold one end of my ribbon, okay, and place it down to where when I pull it back it's about a half inch from the edge here. Then, I've got one I've already done, you're going to stitch a little square here. Go around a couple of times because this is a stress point and you don't want to um, have this come off. Before you stitch the ties on, unfold this because you don't want to stitch through both layers. Fold your ends over. Okay, and there they are. Now fold the book and make sure you had enough to go around the side here and that your book isn't buckling. This is real important. So always test it out before you start stitching things. Then place pins here on each end. Line up your edges good. And make sure you pin over on these two sides also. Now this is important. Stitch real close to the edge here. Stitch back and forth a few times here. Stitch across, stitch back and few times, back and forth a few times here, because this is a stress area. Stitch across your opening, then come here, stitch back and forth, stitch across, and stitch back and forth. And then do the same thing on the other side. I recommend when you go to insert these into your cover, this is the thick cardboard that's in the very back. This side will slip in real easy. This side here is the really thin cardboard, so you'll have to bend it a little bit and then slip it inside. So if you're doing a hard cover book, it might be a little more difficult to slip this on. So this is a perfect little cover for these small notebooks that just have thin cardboard wrapped around it. So then go ahead, fold it over, and then tie this in a bow. Now, I had a viewer a while back who uh, gave me a tip on what to do with the ends of the ribbons. It had something to do with singeing them. If you're still watching, could you uh, leave a little more descriptive uh, comment on it so I know exactly what you're doing? Um, thanks a lot for your tip because it sounded like a good tip. 
and then you're all good to go. I loved this No Sew project. I had such a great time that I wanted to share it with you. What you're going to need is a lot of different colors of fabric. Mine has an autumn theme to it. So I had so many scraps because I have a ton of fabric. I have a room full of fabric. So I didn't need to go out and buy any fabrics. Or you could go out, if you don't have a stash of fabric, purchase a couple of jelly rolls that are already two and a half inch wide because that's the size we're going for. And you can cut that up or buy fat quarters and cut them up. It's really whatever you want to do. So I've selected all these different autumn colors in there. I stacked all a lot of my fabrics together and I cut them two and a half inches wide and nine inches long. You're also going to need a wire wreath. I purchased my wire wreath from the dollar store. I'm sure you can get them at Hobby Lobby and maybe even Joann's or Michael's Crafts. I think they even have them at Walmart but I can't really remember. But Dollar Tree is so cheap. So you're going to take your wire wreath and take a strip of your fabric. Now some people just like folding them in half once but I fold in half twice because I just found it so much easier. So fold it in half and fold it in half again. Now as I said I have a really bum right hand so it may look a little odd to you how I'm doing this but I kind of have to do what works for me. So you're going to start either on the inside row or the outside row. It's whatever you prefer. And tie a knot. And pull it. And try to have it to where you have equal amounts of fabric on each end. All right, so you push it off to the side. Take your next one and fold it in half. Take it and tie it on. Okay, and then tie it in a knot. Sorry I'm taking so long, but I'll get there. All right, and so you tie it in a knot, and again, make sure equal amounts of fabric are on each side and you keep pushing it off to the side and you go all the way around then you go to the next row go all the way around next row and this row let me show you what mine looks like isn't this gorgeous I love this and I'm excited about making one more because I have a double front door and I want two of them on there. Now, if you want more information about rag wreaths, go to the search window in, in YouTube and just enter rag wreath and you will see all different styles, some with gorgeous bows on them and other decor. So this is a great project for any time of year and you can see just how easy it will be for kids. So I hope you try to do this. For other novelty sewing projects, play this video to the very end where you will see a green screen and then click on the links. If you like this video, would you please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on that share button to share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go to that button in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to enter your email address and click on the little bell so you receive email notifications to your phone. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, see you next time and happy sewing!